the span of less than 18 hours, I've been standing in this spot for, for two very different types of celebrations of life. Last night was the first night ceremony for our newest students, first year students. And it was louder than this. And it was raucous. And the screen was there because they had a movie to show. And afterwards they processed to my house and presented me with a book of memories. And just now sitting there, I was thinking that Fran would love that. Because she was here for students and she was here for their exuberance. And she was here to be with them and to protect them and guide them and teach them and mentor them. And so I thought, in just 18 hours, in the same place, two very different but linked celebrations of life. <clears throat> Therese, Aaron, Tanasia, Eric, to all of your family, and to all of your friends, on behalf of this great university, please extend, please accept my condolences <clears throat> for your great loss. I did not know Fran very well at all, having just arrived a few months ago. <clears throat> But as I said at a different time and place, it was quite clear to me that she was a force of nature. <laughs> and she was that very rare thing. She was both, simultaneously, the unstoppable force and the immovable object. <laughs> <laughs> and she stood for something she knew from moral conviction that she was right, and she was not going to be moved off her position. And when she encountered others that perhaps thought that they were immovable, <laughs> and she knew in her heart that they were not in the right, the unstoppable force won that day. By all accounts, everything I've heard, especially in the last few weeks, Fran was, <coughs> first of all, a leader. But she led not from positional authority, which as you know, no, never works. She led from moral persuasion. That she deeply believed, and as we've heard already, she led a life that reflected precisely what she believed. I heard her speak about living an authentic life. That's one of my favorite phrases. I wish that for many more people. I knew in her work with students, she could strike that balance between letting the trivialities of youth pass by while pushing people and urging people to lead more authentic lives. And she did that by moral persuasion. She was a change maker. Again, not from positional authority, but from understanding and knowing and believing deep in her heart that change was needed. And change is needed. And she cared about things that are very difficult to change. She clearly was a mentor to so many. For 30 years, I've been telling people, you can assign a student an advisor, but you cannot assign a mentor. A mentoring relationship is something that develops over time. It's based on trust and understanding and insight and care and love. And it's very clear to me that Fran was, and as we just heard, will continue to be a mentor to so many. Some tomato. <laughs> She was an advocate for those who needed advocacy. And despite my size, I will tell you how I understand that. Because as a boy, I was bullied badly, routinely, and often. I was this tall when I was 13 and a half years old, and I weighed about 150 pounds. And I was smart. 
That made me a target where I grew up. That made me a target. I was beat badly on many occasions. I understand weakness, and I hate when people take advantage of it. And I know Fran lived a life to fight against that in all of his guises. Having spent no more than 60 or 90 minutes with her, that commitment makes her immemorable in my life and precious. Put on 100 pounds since then, it hasn't happened to me. That's really bad to beat up the president. <laughs>